Oh, well, let's start with Facebook. Uh, printers are using Facebook to create landing pages for their businesses, which is really exciting. I feel that's a feature that's being underutilized by businesses in general on Facebook. A uh, landing page can actually uh, be used to promote a particular product. It can be used to engage clients in Facebook uh, before someone hits the wall. Uh, so then let's talk about the wall. So creating a landing page for the business, then moving to the wall, you can or what we're seeing printers use uh, Facebook for is to really engage their community in fun and enlightening ways. Uh, for example, offering contests in their community or talking about uh, you know, where's their delivery driver? And the first person to find the delivery driver that day receives a gift card for sandwiches or something along those lines. Um, a lot of just really creative ways that don't sell the product is what we've been seeing a lot of printers do. Uh, with LinkedIn, using LinkedIn, one, to really enhance their professional image and their profile online. Because what we have found is a lot of uh, print buyers, once a sales rep from a printing company leaves the office, what happens is someone goes online to look them up, to learn more about them, to Google them, of course. And having those profiles established and built up in LinkedIn and using that properly, as well as using LinkedIn to find more out, to find out more about their prospect that they're calling on, understanding the size of the company, uh, what the person's background is and their history, um, using LinkedIn to identify the industries that they're connected with, which is a feature of LinkedIn that a lot of individuals don't take advantage of, and we're seeing more and more printers use it as a great business tool. And then Twitter, I'm not seeing really a wide adoption of Twitter in our industry yet. I think that might change in time, uh, but I find that a lot of printers are not quite sure what they need to tweet about and who's, who are they going to tweet to. So that might change in the next year or so. Well, we could talk about that for a long time. <laughs> what they should be doing is a lot of the things I just mentioned and making sure that they're engaging the audience in a very fun way. Uh, the philosophy for Facebook is very different than it is for LinkedIn. And the approach for LinkedIn is different than Twitter. They're all different forms of media and the same message shouldn't be sent to all three of them. Facebook is a social tool and it's where people have dialogue and have fun. So printers should not be using Facebook to sell a product or a service, and that's what I find uh, some printers doing. You know, every post they make is talking about their business cards, or let us help you with your next trade show display, or hey, when you need envelopes, give us a call. So that's what they should not be doing, because the consumer's been asked to be a friend of the company, and now the company is just trying to sell them something. So what they'll do, the consumer will hide any updates coming in from that business. So you don't want that to happen. You want to have fun, have contests, ask your customers if they're going to be shipped off to an island tomorrow. What are they going to take with them? Um, ask what is their favorite restaurant in, time, in town. It has nothing to do with their business or printing. But that's not what Facebook's about. It's about engaging people and having dialogue. And when it comes to LinkedIn, that's the professional tool. That's where you can talk about your services. That's where you talk about how you make an impact in the companies who you do business with. And that's where you want to be. Uh, what you should not do with LinkedIn is, one, not ask for recommendations. That's really important. Um, number two, a lot of the profiles that we see have not been updated since they were created, so the information's not right. And then in LinkedIn, there's a summary of who you are as an individual in your company where it gives you a chance to talk about how you help people. So you want to make sure that has really good keywords that are relevant to your business. And a lot of the LinkedIn profiles I see, the printers aren't taking advantage of really good keywords. So those are what you should do with LinkedIn. And then Twitter, you don't want to tweet constantly about something you're trying to sell because that's a big no-no in Twitter world. And as I shared earlier, a lot of people aren't using Twitter in the printing industry, but the, some of the tweets that I do see 
It's all sales related. It's, it's trying to pitch, pitch, pitch. So then I'm simply not going to follow you anymore if you keep trying to sell me something. So with Twitter, just don't send things out about your products and services, but maybe drive people back to things that are interesting, that you found interesting, that really can help your customers. And if you can help your customers solve their problems, may not be print related, but they will have more respect for you and you'll gain a larger following. Is a formal marketing plan a requirement? Well, a formal marketing plan would be ideal because in today's environment, it's no longer about sending out a direct mail piece or selecting a newspaper to run an ad in. You have to consider every aspect of media that you're engaging with and while it doesn't have to be formal, you definitely need to put a lot of thought into what you want and how you want to market your company. And so formal would be ideal, but at least put your thoughts down and what your message is going to be through each channel you choose to use, which is your website, your printed material, your social media, which includes Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and make sure that the messages are coherent. And if you don't sit down and put thought to that, okay. you're not gonna have an opportunity to be as effective as you could be. Absolutely, that's a requirement in today's age with over 70% of our population having a form of a mobile device. Uh, you're going to see that more and more. It doesn't mean that the end user is going to be purchasing print through their telephone. I don't know how realistic that is, but your website absolutely positively has to be mobile friendly and uh, making sure that you remove any flash or animation from a mobile version of the site or your regular site so that it can be viewed on the mobile devices. So people can get your phone number, they can see what hours you're open, and yes, make sure that your, your website is definitely mobile friendly. The impact of social media in the, the near future, it's changing so fast based on how businesses are adopting social media, how consumers are adopting social media, that I really don't know that any one of us are sure how or what is going to be in the future, except for the fact that it has become a critical component of how we do business. And for the first time in history, uh, people have access to information unlike they've ever had before. And that includes recommendations, reviews of your company, uh, what people like, what they dislike, what your products are, and understanding that it has expanded beyond the website can have a profound impact on how people view your business in a way that they've never had before. QR codes in the B2C space, I feel, are going to uh, really take off because as a consumer, if you're reading through a publication you're interested in, you see a QR code on an ad and you scan that with your mobile device and you see that there's a promotion or a discount for a product that you're particularly interested in and you place the order then, that would be very powerful. Uh, if you're walking down the street and you walk by a restaurant that you're really curious about and you want to know what their menu is, and they have a QR code in their window, you take a picture of that, it takes you to their menu page. Um, on business cards, for example, having QR codes so that a contact can now be automatically synchronized with your existing contacts is very powerful. Uh, QR codes as it relates to the B2B environment is a little bit more challenging because will people truly engage with a landing page through their mobile device for a business to business relationship? Uh, there's a lot of opportunity with the business cards, contacts and so forth, but uh, I think it will be a little more, uh, a little longer in timelines before we see how QR codes are impacting the B2B environment.